The Business Dining Etiquette Workshop will focus on business dining etiquette. The skills you learn here will be applied to an upcoming event we are hosting, the Professional Etiquette and Networking Dinner on March 6. At the end of this presentation, you will be given a short quiz about what we've covered. Passing the quiz will be a requirement to attend the event. More information about the dinner will be given at the end of this presentation. Some of you may panic thinking about sitting through a four-course meal. Today we are going to navigate you through the meal, before, during, and after. Most of the most important interviews and meetings happen over a meal. This isn't a hamburger and fries or pizza with friends type of meal. These types of meetings and interviews occur in a restaurant with linen tablecloths and a formal place setting. Employers are taking job candidates out to lunch to evaluate their social skills. Your manners speak volumes about you as a professional. If you're a sloppy eater, you may be a disorganized employee. If you are a meticulous eater, you are most likely very organized. Manners do matter. Your body language makes up 38% of a first impression. Let's talk about what happens before the meal. You've been invited to have lunch with a potential employer, or lunch with the president of your company, or are attending a formal event such as our upcoming dinner. You arrive at your destination. What are two of the first things you should do? You want to shake hands with all present at the table. Then introduce yourself in clear articulation, especially if you have a hard to pronounce name. At some events, you may need to check in. At check-in, you will be informed what the seating arrangements are, whether they are assigned seating or open seating. How do you know where you are sitting? By place cards. Individual seating is designated by place cards, especially at more formal events. So you're at the table and sit down. What do you do with the napkin? You wait for the host to unfold their napkin. This is your signal to do the same. What if there are no place cards at your table? How can you choose or reserve your seat? Place the napkin over the back of the chair. This will let people know that you have reserved the seat. Where does your napkin go? Place a napkin in your lap. What do you do if you need to go to the restroom but are returning to the table? It's a napkin on your chair. What do you do with the napkin once you finish your meal? Place the napkin unwadded to the right of your plate. Should you spit bad food into your napkin? No, you should never want to spit food or gristle into your napkin. Remove food from your mouth using a spoon or fork and place it on the edge of your plate or charger. Should you blow your nose with your napkin? No, excuse yourself and go to the restroom. If sneezing or coughing is unavoidable, you may use your napkin, but do so as quietly as possible. If you do so, you should not use your napkin for the remainder of the meal. Now you are ready to order your meal. What do you do to show the waiter you are ready to order? Close your menu and place it on the table. If there are items on the menu you are unsure about, ask your server. Refrain from asking about every item on the menu. Order familiar foods you like and ones that are easy to eat, such as chicken, fish, or salads. Hard to eat foods you want to avoid are spaghetti, fettuccine, ribs, corn on the cob, and messy sandwiches. Let your host's order set the price for your meal. If a host says, the prime rib here is fabulous, you should try it. Should you order the prime rib? Absolutely. This is a cue to you that your host is setting the price of the meal. When in doubt, how do you know which price range to order from? When in doubt, order a mid-range priced item. If your host orders an alcoholic beverage, should you order one as well? Absolutely not, even if everyone else does. If you have any food allergies, are a vegetarian, or are gluten-free, should you let your host know? Absolutely. When you send your RSVP, this is when you should inform your host of your food allergies or food preferences. Now let's talk about what to do during the meal. At our dinner, you will be served a four course meal. It will consist of soup, a salad, an entree, and dessert. Reading the table setting. A formal place setting will consist of several 
ware and glassware. Some settings will have the napkin laying on the charger or in the glassware. The charger is an indicator that this will be a served meal. Notice the location of the water glass and other glassware. These are always placed on the right side. The bread knife and bread and butter plate are always placed to the left of your plate. Starting with a salad fork on your left or soup spoon on your right, work your way in using one utensil for each course. The dessert spoon and fork are located above the plate. Sometimes they are brought out with the dessert. Use of silverware. Once you use a piece of silverware, never place it back on the table. If you use a spoon for tea or coffee, place it on the saucer. If you use a spoon for coffee or soup, place it on the saucer, never in the cup or bowl. To let your waiter know you are finished with your meal, lay your fork and knife diagonally across your plate, usually in the four o'clock position. Now let's talk about basic table manners. Always say please and thank you. Never apply makeup or reapply makeup at the table. If you need to leave the table, please be sure to excuse yourself. Your cell phone should be turned off and out of sight at all times. Electronic devices will be covered in more detail later. If coffee or tea is placed on the table, the person nearest the pot should offer to pour filling his or her own cup last. Do not slurp soup. Always use your spoon. If your soup is too hot to eat, let it cool down, but never blow on it. Don't make a sandwich with your rolls. Eat rolls of bread by tearing off small bite-sized pieces. If you're using a wine glass, hold the wine glass by the stem, not the bowl. At our dinner, we will be serving sparkling cider in wine glasses. The passing game. If an item is within your reach, you should pass it to the right. If you cannot reach something, politely ask the person to pass it. Salt and pepper are passed as a set. If you need to butter your rolls or bread, place a fair amount on your plate to avoid constantly asking for butter or making your neighbor wait for you to butter each piece of bread. Posture. You should always sit up straight in your chair. This makes a very good impression. Do not slouch back and don't tip your chair. Fidgeting and elbows. When sitting at the table, you should place your hands in your lap or rest your wrists on the edge of the table when not eating. Refrain from fidgeting habits such as tapping your toe, drumming on the table, or playing with your hair. Eating. Do not arrive at a business lunch and starving. Eat a few crackers before or on your way if needed. You should wait to begin eating until everyone at your table has been served. Do not eat from someone's plate and don't be tempted to feed someone from your food or reach over to spear something off their plate. Don't overindulge. This is not your last meal. Conversation tips. Be aware of current events. Safe topics to discuss are the weather, traffic, traveling. Topics to avoid should be religion, politics, and health issues. At our dinner, we will have icebreakers on the back of your place cards to help with conversations at your table. Don't bring up gossip and don't dominate the conversation. At our dinner, try to engage others at your table by asking questions. Excusing yourself. If you need to use the restroom, you do not need to make an announcement, but you should simply say, excuse me, I'll be right back. Leaving the table without saying a word is rude. After the meal. The meal has ended and the waiter brings the bill to the table. When you are finished eating, the host usually picks up the tab, but it is also safe to bring enough money to cover your meal just in case. Never make an issue about the bill or tip and make sure you thank the host for the meal. Thank you notes. Always follow up with a thank you note to the host of the meal. You should send a thank you note immediately the next day. Mention something that was discussed during the meal. You should send it however you received the invitation. 
For example, if you received an email invitation, you should send a thank you via email. Start to finish guide. So you received an invitation and the host is asking for an RSVP. You should respond accordingly. And once you RSVP, but you can no longer attend, you need to let the host know. Find out if there are any parking fees or if there is parking across the street. Most importantly, find out ahead of time the proper attire. Most formal invitations will indicate this on the front of the invitation. At our dinner, the dress attire will be business professional. Electronic devices. You should turn off or silence your electronic devices before entering the event. If you forget to do so and it rings, turn it off immediately. Do not answer the call, especially if you are in an interview. Do not text and do not browse internet at the table. I leave you with this quote from Clarence Thomas, Supreme Court Justice. Remember, manners do matter.